Stonehenge has a solar calendar, but it also has a lunar calendar. I photographed part of the solar calendar, well, all of it actually, but I haven't done any photo photographs of the lunar calendar. But I will show you that the Stonehenge circle was actually day by day lunar calendar and lines going through the Stonehenge circle marked the 18 point year cycle. 9.3 years one way and 9.3 years the other way. Well just to tie the solar and lunar calendars together very briefly, this is the summer solstice sunrise line that comes high past the top of the Great Triathlon over the top of this end of the, the, the north, the southwest part of the circle and the winter solstice sunset line begins at a heavy stone that they call the heel stone about here passes close to the ground along through the same slots as the summer sunrise goes past the bottom of this stone 56 of the Great Tridathon, past the bottom of the circle stone number 16. The sun, summer sunrise came above the circle and the sun, winter sunset is observed near the bottom, near the ground. Well, I'm going to show you this is the summer moon rise maximum, a line that brushes past stone 21. This is a circle stone. This is trilithon stone 57. So it goes outside it. It goes behind the big trilithon stone 56. It goes just outside the trilithon stone 54 and just out, brushes past the circle stone 10. So I'm going to show you this. It goes the summer rise and the winter set maximum in that direction. It's the same line. And now these are not accurate to 0.1 degrees because these gaps, well the moon, the moon is less regular than the sun. But anyway, if you look in the direction, if you look southeast, stand on the on the bank of the 100 meter diameter ditch and th this is stone 21 you can't see the stone 57 behind here this is the the circle stone 10 on the far side and it goes through this gap between those circle stones and this is the great trilithon stone 56 so that's in the summer direction the opposite direction in the winter, if you're looking northwest. And so this is stone 10, and stone 57 is hidden behind it. This is stone 56. There's sort of the edge of stone 21 here. So this is just the opposite direction. I will tell you there are, on the average, moon cycle, there are 29.5, 29 and a half days in the moon cycle. I will show you that this corresponds to the half a day. It's, it, this is a circle uh, stone. It's about half the size of the regular ones, half as high. So the line I showed you is this one. For the summer max and the, the rise max and the winter set max. But there is a 20 degree cycle. It goes 20 degrees down, 9.3 years, and 20 degrees back, another 9.3 years. So the minimum directions going through this circle stones are past stone 18. There are a bunch of things that they call blue stones, another thing. And it goes outside the blue stone circle in here and it passed 10. So these max and min lines 
intersect by Stone Town. This is the winter minimum, and this is the summer minimum. But there are 30 stones in the Stonehenge Circle. And 150 years ago, because the summer solstice sunrise line was along here, 150 years ago, just so that people in different places could talk about these stones, if you knew the number, if everybody used the same number, he started beside the uh, sunrise, the southeast side of the circle, and they went clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The short one is number 11, and then 12, 13, 14, around to 30. 30 here. But it's symmetrical. Half of 30 is 15. So if you go opposite 1, 1 plus 15 is 16, this, this line goes through the middle of the circle. If you go opposite 11, 11 plus 15 is 26. If you go, well, those are unfortunate. If you go, I'm trying to find one. 21 opposite will be 6. So this line will go through the middle of the circle and so on, 22 and 7. It's a symmetrical thing. So if you can set this kind of line between the cracks on this side, you should be able to do exactly the same thing on the other side. And you can. So we call these the lunar calendar rectangles of 4,400 years ago. The summer solstice line was accurate 4,400 years ago, so these lunar lines are only accurate for 4,400 years ago. Well, 4,400 up to about 3,500 years ago, the lines are okay. So anyway, you can draw this line exactly parallel to this one, and then if you join these edges between stone 10 and stone 6, between 21 and stone, stone uh, 25, those are the ends of the rectangle. Now you do between the minima, exactly the same thing, this is a broader rectangle. But the ones that we're going to focus on are, are these. Well, in 29.5 20, days in one moon cycle, I call that a month because what we call a month has anywhere from 28 to 31 days in it. So it's not regular. And if you're going to stick with a moon cycle, you have to be uh, 29 and a half average and do as the lunar calendar people, the Muslims and the, the Jews, and you have to have 29 days in some of these cycles and 30 days in other cycles, 50-50. Well, the Stonehenge Circle was initially dedicated to the moon. That's why we have this representation of the 29 and then the little one for the half. To make it work for the lunar calendar, I renumbered the stones. It'll take 50 years for anybody else to use this numbering system, but this is where they will wind up 50 years from now. These lines intersect at this stone. So I said, that's where we'll start the numbering. And this has to be the last one, so that means we have to go counterclockwise in our numbering system. So this is stone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 around here. This is 29. So half the months will have only 29 days, and half the months will have 30 days. This is the half stone. I will justify later on this intersection point and why we start here, one, because there's stuff going on out here as well.
later, the sun became the chief deity. The, I think ancient peoples used the moon as the, the main deity because the moon changes shape every night. And you can see a maximum of 28 different shapes of the moon. And this is why there are 28 rays in the Sun Cairn ring out here in the, near Majorville. So they, they use the moon as a day counter. But later on, when people realize that the sun is really what keeps us alive, we die when the sun goes away in the winter, I mean, most of the deaths happen in January and February, uh, the sun became the, chain, the main deity. So what are they going to do with the lunar calendar? They've got to move it outside the sun circle. Stonehenge circle now becomes dedicated to the sun. The moon is secondary. It gets moved outside. So when the sun is the chief honcho, they recreate the 29 and 30 by digging holes. Whether they put stones in those holes or posts, I don't know, but their holes still remain. If you take the summer moon rise maximum, extend it, you come through one of these holes that they dug. They did a spiral of what somebody called the Y holes and an inner spiral called the Z holes. And uh, the people who, who originally named these things thought that they should really be circles. And there are only 29 in the inner circle. And so they thought, well, they just ran out of time and they didn't dig the, the 30th one here. So they thought that they should be two symmetrical things corresponding to the 30 stones here. But anyway, if you stack this line, it goes through one of the Y holes. And there is a grave beside that Y hole. So this is a very special Y hole, marked with a burial. So if you've got to go around to make this a double spiral, you have to go in the clockwise direction. Y1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you come to 30. And then you move straight west, and you hit the first Z hole. And then you go away. Clockwise again, one, two, three, four, four around. You get to 29, and then you go southerly to Y1 again. So this is the new lunar calendar. How do we express, that's the daily calendar. How do we express the 19 point year cycle? Well, they only took the maximum. The, the southerly maximum for the sun full, the, the, the full moon and the northerly maximum for the winter full moon. Rise, set. So they, in this outer set of stones, 56, 56 holes, was discovered and named by a fellow called Aubrey two or three hundred years ago. They moved markers for the lunar rectangle out to the Aubrey circle. And they put a stone here, another stone here, but for some reason south was special, and so they actually dug a, a ditch around it. And the people call this a south barrel. But anyway, that's the position of the, where the stone was. This is another standing stone. They call these things station stones. And then over here is another, or the, the fourth one, but again, the north, they dug a, a ditch around it. That's called the north barrel. So that means that the station stones were dug many hundreds of years after the Stonehenge Circle was built. Some of the people are still arguing about that, but I think that this is where they will wind up. So this is the 18-year cycle. They, they don't have a a minimum 9.9 .9 halfway of the cycle, you have to go out and then back again. End of the Stonehenge Lunar Calendar.